Now, when you were a kid, chances are at one time or another, you parked yourself squarely in front of the TV set with your eyes glued to the cartoons. Mickey Mouse, The Simpsons, Betty Boop, Popeye, Danger Mouse, Blinky Bill, The Snorks, Fat Albert. The animated characters can definitely be pretty captivating. But over the last century, you would have noticed some change in cartoons. They're different in style and in content as well. And now there's a myriad of animations for adults, and the kids' ones have changed a bit as well. So here to walk you through this animation evolution is Reza Sakamari, a senior lecturer with a focus on animation at SAE in Sydney. Hello, Reza. Good afternoon and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Now, uh, lots of talk of new beginnings, so I thought we'd start at the beginning with animation. It, it started a long time before it hit our TV screens. Where did the idea for animation actually come from? Well, actually, the, the earliest example of animation goes back to 5,400 years ago. Um, five images printed on a pottery ball, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> in, in Shahr Sukhte in west of Persia. And of course, um, you know, uh, we go back to Egyptian murals, cavemen, um, carving wrestling matches on decoration walls around 4,000 years ago. Um, it, that's quite fascinating. You skip post to post figures and you see the animation coming to life. Um, then Asian Chinese try to illustrate the impression for movements by a series of um, animal figures mostly in running and that's exactly what I what, what I call this phase impression of movement um, around the year 1580 among the great men of renaissance was Leonardo da Vinci as we all know it he was an artist and inventor and he was trying to illustrate uh, the proportion he studied human anatomy and uh, according to Walt Disney himself uh, da Vinci was a pioneer in animation industry of course with didn't have frame rate back then, so it was just static images one after another. Yet the practice of um, illustrating movement over time was a, you know, it was a solid foundation for today's animation. But a very different these days to uh, to the cave painting. That's <laughs> certainly <for sure>. it is. <laughs> and then came this uh, persistence of vision. What is that? Yeah. Um, so uh, back in 17th century, um, usually. Um, Mostly, I would say, inventors and engineers were developing uh, tools mainly to entertain, amaze, or even sometimes frighten people. You know, uh, inventors um, developed devices uh, to entertain, and uh, that played a very, um, quite an essential role to attract kids. As a matter of fact, uh, that led to an invention of toys as we know today for kids and the only reason was because uh, many of those devices could have been viewed by the audience of one that's why they were considered <laughs> as a toy rather than the device for a um, let's say large scale entertainment industry um, examples would be uh, the top of my head 17th century uh, the magic lantern people used to stay in a queue for a very long time to see uh, magic is happening before their eyes. And it was nothing more than a, a concave mirror in a cylinder. Or 19th century, um, a French inventor called Paul Roger demonstrated uh, persistent vision uh, with a device called a uh, thaumatrope, uh, which... In, in Greek means a wheel of magic, by the way. Uh, this was a simple disc with different pictures on both sides. Uh, but when the disc is twirled, uh, you don't see separate pictures, but the, combi the combined impressions. Um, but to, in my opinion, the, the real credit uh, uh, for generating the feel of animation, as we know today, goes to Joseph Plateau. Um, for inventing uh, finakestoscope. You know, um, we talk about early devices to create animation. We always, you know, um, I'm sure you've come across a cylinder, um, a, a small cylinder with, uh, you know, a series of images drawn in, in progressive position. Mm. When you spin the cylinder, those static figures appear to move. And that was a, a basically a trigger for people to look at it from a different perspective. Um, then in 1880-80, Charles Reynolds uh, invented his, uh, his own interpretation of the technology. And he was the 
he was a cartoonist. For the very first time, he wasn't a scientist or a, or engineer. He was a cartoonist. Um, and he basically uh, created um, something, a device called a theater optic. And that was the first short animation in the history. It was a 15-minute product called Poor Pete. And um, uh, an interesting fact about this is 500,000 people attended at the screening that evening, wow. which was quite fascinating. That's huge. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and I love that, you know, even originally these were made for magic and entertainment, the beginning of animation, and it's still being used for that today and it still has that magical element, especially for children, where these, you know, moving pictures are on the TV and they're drawings, but they're moving. It's crazy. True. Now, I know Windsor McKay created, I guess, what was really the very first cartoon star. Can you tell us a bit about him? Yeah, he, he was a genius. Um, he was, uh, again, a cartoonist, um, which inspired many, many animators, not only in animation domain, but also in compositing domain. He did a lot of all sorts of inventions. Uh, to begin with, he started with, with the rice paper. The good thing about rice paper is it doesn't absorb ink. So if you put your pen on a paper for 15 minutes, it's not going to make a big mess. It's still a simple dot. So it that gave him more flexibility to draw. Also, uh, rice paper is translucent. So he could kind of trace back his animation to see before frame, previous frames, and he could kind of tweak the animation uh, in, a, in a very professional way. He used uh, cross marks around four corners, could call it registration mark. So uh, that introduced uh, a, a, a new concept which could you could kind of reduce jitteriness. Um, and he um, created uh, Gertie the dinosaur uh, based on his own techniques. He, he kind of wrote uh, the, the, the lines for the story. He directed the story. He produced the story. And it was a huge success. You could see... Uh, for the very first time in history, live action footage and animation are coming together in one picture. So basically the animation is uh, people in a, in, a, in a room are watching on a screen and that what is playing on a screen is an animation. It, uh, Gertie is a dinosaur and he's kind of playing tricks. Um, and it was fascinating. It was fascinating to many people and... Um, the good thing was Windsor um, McKay was quite inspired. He wanted to continue, but unfortunately, uh, it wasn't profitable at that time. He abandoned the sequel because he couldn't afford, um, you know, buying thousands and thousands of uh, rice paper sheets. So he kind of abandoned the technology, but the, the technique, the implementation inspired um, J.R. Bray. Um, which um, he established, he, he looked at Windsor and he established Bray production based on Windsor McCoy's technique and he established perhaps one of the first studios entirely devoted to animation. That was Windsor McKay's dream come true, but um, later on he used Windsor McKay's um, opinion to basically to head towards the right direction and um, uh, made a huge profit and success. Well, Windsor McKay, of course, that was Gertie the Dinosaur was in the silent era. So I'd love to play you some audio from it, but it would just be a whole bunch of silence. Um, sure. <laughs> but, um, but I did want to play you this one. Steven Stil Spielberg receiving the prestigious Windsor McKay Award. To have Windsor McKay's name on this Achievement Award is incredible. I have been a lifelong fan of his and even did an homage to him in Jurassic Park. When we did the Mr. DNA animated sequence, the dinosaur, the brontosaurus, walking away from camera was a little bit of a tribute to Windsor McKay. And I've loved animation all my life. As I've said many, many times, the early Walt Disney films taught me how to be a storyboard artist when I first uh, got into live action movies. I started Amblimation in the 1980s and had a great time with Don Bluth and that whole gang with Roger Rabbit later on with Bob Zemeckis. Uh, it has just, it's just been a great sort of, uh, you know, downhill roller coaster ride for me. And then Jeffrey and, and myself and David Geffen, we started DreamWorks Animation in 1994, 1995. So uh, I feel very much a part of you. 
I feel very much like I'm a part of this group, and therefore this honor really fills me up so deeply. Thank you all very, very much. That is Steven Spielberg receiving the prestigious Windsor McKay Award on ABC Local Radio. We are talking about animation. I'd love to know what your favourite animation or cartoon is. On Facebook, on the Rihanna Patrick Facebook page, Gavin has said, Attack on Titan has brilliant animation, storyline and character development. And Samuel also says, All time, it's Futurama and currently loving uh, Archer and Bojack Horseman. And we are speaking with Reza Sarkamari, a senior lecturer with a focus on animation at SAE Sydney, to let us know a bit of the history of animation and uh, what has happened along the way. Do you know, is it true if Walt Disney actually modelled one of his characters on Felix the Cat? Um, speaking of Walt Disney, actually, um, Walt Disney didn't have any intention to get into the industry business, uh, to animation industry. Um, the the only selling factor for Walt Disney was uh, to see the success of Bray Production. Um, he was actually um, he teamed up with uh, Fred Herman. Um, he, he was a cartoonist and the brother of uh, Hugh Herman. And Fred and Hugh started uh, producing an animated short film called Looney Tunes, which was quite um, famous back then, uh, back in golden age of animation. But uh, Walt Disney, uh, the selling point that Walt Disney saw in Bray production was, um, because he was an entrepreneur and he was an artist as well, he brought, uh, he kind of inspired by many, many animations, uh, not just one. And for the very first time, he ended um, the, 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 um, the silent era single-handedly. So up to that moment, uh, music had been a major part of um, any animation industry because simply all of them were, were silent. Um, but for the first time in 1928, um, the Walt Disney brought sound to the motion picture and introduced uh, the new chapter in, in animation industry. And that was Steamboat Willie. Here is a little bit of the audio from that cartoon. Steamboat Willie there, a little bit of that one from uh, about 1928. That's that right. One. Reza, they used a click track for that one as well, and I think they called it Mickey Mousing for a while, that, that <laughs> technique. Why, why did they use a click track? Well, um, I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very difficult question. But um, th that was uh, the, the first... Um, the, uh, Samba Willie was the... Um, I would say Mickey Mouse single-handedly rescued Disney from bankruptcy <laughs> and everything took off <laughs> after that moment. And Walt Disney and uh, Mickey Mouse we got, got really, really famous after that Sam but Willie. It was quite successful. Um, and that led to another um, invention for uh, Walt Disney. He uh, introduced Technicolor technology to, um, to introduce colors for the very first time. He teamed up with um, RKO Studio um, not wrong. I think it was RKO Studio to invent uh, a new generation uh, of, of cameras called multiplane cameras. I don't want to get to um, technical details, <laughs> but he won an Oscar basically for that. Um, and r after that, of course, many, many more characters such as Goofy or Donald Duck or Woody Woodpecker and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, big changes as soon as Mickey Mouse entered. And he's still, I think, one of the most famous cartoon characters in the world. Definitely he is, yes. So originally these were quite short, these animations. When and why did animation going from being these very short form films to feature length? Um, the success of um, D Disney products actually let Disney to take a huge risk. He um, put together a great team. Uh, he called it Nine Old Men. <laughs> Nine animation legends. Uh, actually, they were the actual inspiration for me to get into animation industry. But um, 
artists, I should say, geniuses like uh, Frank Thomas or Les Clark, Ollie Johnson, um, they got together uh, as a team and uh, I think it's in 1937 they uh, produced uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarf, which was the first American feature-length animated film. It was a huge, huge game changer in animation industry and kind of established uh, that industry and made it quite profitable, to be honest with you. Um, but of course, um, by 1960, the medium of television was uh, beginning to gain more popularity. Absolutely. Which... Well, let's take a listen to that trailer from that original Snow White film. Hi-ho! Once again, for your entire family, the lyrical, light-hearted entertainment of Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Magic milk on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Lips red as the rose, hair black as ebony, skin white as snow. Snow White. Featuring those beguiling Disney characters loved by everyone. And of course, this is Grumpy. Mush. Here's Doc. <laughs> why, 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 yeah? And Bashful. Oh. Sleepy. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> and this must be... <laughs> Sneezy. Happy? That's me. And this is Dopey. He don't talk none. <laughs> you mean he can't? He don't know. He never tried. Then, too, there's the terrible witch. Have a bite. Here's a happy treat of fun and musical fantasy that lasts forever. Enjoy this delightful experience in happiness. See Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The original trailer there. And Reza, as you mentioned, a huge risk for Disney going with the feature film. And the content and and the storyline was quite different to anything he'd done before as well, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it certainly was, yes. And you could see the change uh, from that point onward. Um, you could see the maturity that was happening to, to every single product. But uh, what fascinates me is... Um, that Disney nine old men, uh, they kind of stayed right to the end. Uh, they established 12 principles of animation, which we, we all use today. They're not rules, uh, they're guidelines uh, to get a, a more appealing animation in a in the fastest time possible. And they, they still work. And uh, it's amazing what happened and it kind of revolutionized the, the industry. We are talking about change tonight and this hour we are looking at the changes in animation over the last century or so and all of the different types of animation that have turned up. We're talking to Reza Sakamari, a senior lecturer with a focus on animation at SAE Sydney and we've gone through uh, the movies so now it's time to talk TV. Now Reza, for so many of us, animation wasn't one of those things that we just went to the movies to see. It was also on our TV screen screens every morning or afternoon. When did that start? Well, um, as I mentioned, in around 1960, um, the medium of television was uh, beginning to gain more popularity. And um, of course, uh, 19th uh, century, this de- decade, uh, saw some uh, creative sparks in theatrical film medium, uh, mainly thank to, thanks to Pink Panther, one of my favourite <laughs> characters of all time. I love but, Pink Panther. My first yeah. toy ever was a Pink Panther toy when I was a baby. <laughs> don't know what that says about my parents. but <laughs> yeah, So am I. Sounds embarrassing, but... Well. <laughs> um, but the, 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 
the, uh, to tell you the truth, um, sadly, people didn't go to, to movies as, as much, and families simply prefer to stay home and, and watch television. So um, th around 1960, the television era started to, to shine, and uh, it's impossible to talk about television era and not to talk, and not to talk about Hanna-Barbera, which w had a huge impact on, on, this, uh, on this era. Why is it that they had such a big impact? Yeah, well, um, HB Enterprise, they, um, which, well, Hanna Barbara, they were um, the American animation studios, and uh, they kind of dominated television for nearly three decades and made cartoons exclusively uh, for television. Um, the 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 studio founded by William Hanna and Joseph Barbara, um, hence Hanna Barbara, uh, but the the animations they created it was so um, stunning and charming of um, cre uh, creatures or characters I should say like uh, Tom and Jerry and Flintstones and Yugi Bear and Smurfs and they all came out of they were a child of um, uh, Hanna Barbera studio they won uh, seven Academy Award and eight Emmy Award and I believe a Golden Globe uh, and of course Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame for, for their efforts. Um, the, the thing is, uh, the, the selling point was they, their aim was to find a place um, in, in between families to so basically um, anyone with any age can enjoy watching cartoons and have a good laugh at home to bring the family together uh, and uh, you know n n it, it was much easier for the family to stay home and uh, to be together and to have a chat and uh, have a good laugh and, and, and watch a, a cartoon so it was a cartoon for kind of everyone not for just for the kids um, and that's where it all began to, to to have something for adults as well. Um, honorable mention, of course, uh, we, we need to mention Disney and uh, the creation of Disneyland around um, 1954. And of course, Looney Tune cartoons founded by Warner Bros. Studios, they all played a part. Uh, and they, they all help cartoons to find its place among mid-level families. And um, it, to, in a nutshell, it was a fun time for everyone. And good that a lot of them were about families as well. Just in time for the flight to Texarock. Come on, Wilma. Step on it, Rubbles. Isn't it exciting, Pebbles? You're going to visit Uncle Tex on his ranch. Go, go. Uncle Tex. <laughs> Uncle Tex. Oh, he'll love her. Maybe enough to give her a few shares of oil stock. Oh, uh, yeah, Fred. Uh, there's nothing like a rich uncle. Uh, maybe if I'm real sweet, Uncle Tex will adopt me. <laughs> <laughs> now, stop it, Barney. Just be thankful we were invited along with Fred and Wilma. Look at that, Bam Bam. He won't make a move without his barbell. Oh, okay, Bam Bam. Th that's enough. Drop it. She's she, ready. She, 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 she's ready. Oh, I, I got, got it. it. I got it. <laughs> Call the doctor, Fred. Uh, the doctor. Uh, yeah, yeah, the doctor. No, 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 Bonnie. You grab the suitcase. I'll call it. Uh, hello, hello, Dr. Rockmile. Uh, this is Fred Hospital. I'm taking my wife to the Flintstone. Come on, Bonnie. Let's go. Isn't that cute, Fred? Look at all those kids. <laughs> this is going to be a party you'll never forget. Hi, everybody. Daddy, Barney, come on in. How's that for a birthday cake, Bon? Oh, it looks like that cake. Caterer is right on the ball, Fred. It's a beaut. Sit next to Pebbles, Bam Bam. I wish I understood baby talk. Yeah. Maybe we're missing a good joke. <laughs> okay, Fred, start the party. Right, sweetheart. All right, let the show begin. Presenting the Ragtime 
kind of a swinging group for a kid's party. But I guess the caterer knows what he's doing. Oh! Fred, look! Coming out of the birthday cake, dancing girls, millions of them. Uh oh, the bowler at something's gone wrong. Boy, oh boy, we never had anything like this when I was a kid. <laughs> Hush up, Barney. That is, of course, the Flintstones bringing families together. But Reza, these days, not all of the cartoons are quite so family friendly, are they? <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there does seem to be a lot more cartoons that are made really sure. just for adults. You've got Adult Swim and South Park and Ren and Stimpy even. When did we start to see this change from it being a family-friendly or child-based thing to have animation to make it for adults? Yeah, it all started around um, around 1991. Um, the 90s, that's what I call it, animation renaissance, uh, where we um, kind of see the transition from classic animation into modern animation. Um, and it wasn't just in, in animation industry. It all started with uh, Stephen... Um, Lisberger's concept to bring animation into feature films in 1981. He eventually created Tron, and it was a huge box office success. Then, of course, Spielberg and Zemeckis uh, masterpiece. Uh, they uh, produced Who Framed Roger Rabbit in 1984, which was a great mix of live action and you know um, animated 2D characters at the same time. Um, and then all these events led to um, a concept called adult animation. Uh, Fox, Fox Networks um, actually. Uh, picked up um, a, a new season for um, for um, a series called Simpsons. It was just a, a test run to see if they can kind of achieve something, and uh, they ended up um, um, scooping 40, 24 actually Emmy awards and um, twenty six annual awards. It was a huge, huge success, and uh, that led Fox to um, to develop um, other animated series aimed at adults like Futurama or Family Guy or American Dad. And of course, Cartoon Networks and Adult Swings um, um, came after that, uh, that success of um, um, Fox Network. Um, and uh, I, I can name just uh, too many. <laughs> Rick and Marty, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Harvey uh, Birdman, uh, Perfect Hair Forever, so on and so forth. And they're hugely popular and still ongoing process. Yeah, and it all kind of began with these guys. Yes. Now, here's a little trick to help you remember. If it's clear and yellow, you've got juice there, fella. If it's tangy and brown, you're in Cider Town. Buy Agra at $5 a pill? Whatever it is, it's going in Skinner's coffee. What is in this coffee? Uh, I sleep in a racing car. Do you? I sleep in a big bed with my wife. Oh. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Super Nintendo Chalmers. Meow. I'm learning. Aw, oh, way to go, Ralph. Lunch, Lady Doris. Have uh, you got any grease? Yes. Yes, we do. Then grease me up, woman. Okie dokie. Yeah, well, you love Mole Man. No, you do. You're gay for Mole Man. You're gay for Mole Man. <laughs> no one's gay for Mole Man. <laughs> Glad you didn't come cheap. I couldn't help it. She knew my one weakness. That I'm weak. There's nothing on earth like a genuine, bona fide, electrified six-car monorail. What about bacon? No. Ham? No. Pork chop? Dad, those all come from the same animal. <laughs> yeah, right, Gita. A wonderful, magical animal. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, The Simpsons on ABC Local Radio. I'm Sarah Howells, and we are speaking w with Reza Sarkamari, Senior Lecturer with a focus on animation at SAE Sydney, and we're talking about that very thing, animation. And, I mean, The Simpsons must be one of those things. It's one of the most quoted um, series ever and the longevity of The Simpsons. Why do you think it's lasted so long and continued to be so popular? Of course, it, it, it 
it relates to, to the audience, you know. Um, uh, the writer's inspired by day-to-day -day life. So they, they they look around themselves and they kind of find an idea. It's like lightning bulb opening up and lighting up and just they <laughs> put things into paper and bring them to life. Well, I mean, obviously the content has changed over the years, but uh, also the way an animation looks has changed quite a lot. Computer animation changing the game significantly and 3D animation. When and how did that first start happening? Um, well, a lot happened in, in early 90s. Um, around that time, the, the barrier between animation and special effect was kind of shattered. Um, uh, films such as Terminator 2 or Jurassic Park made a, a huge and yet positive impact on uh, computer graphics um, to the to the point that it, it kind of became second nature and often went unnoticed. Uh, it was around 1995 where Disney partnered with Pixar to introduce Toy Story and that was the first uh, future film made entirely using computer graphics imagery. Uh, the, the, the film's success was so great that other studios looked into producing their own CGI movies. Uh, DreamWorks, Sony, um, eventually um, Walt Disney bought Pixar, and which led to uh, masterpieces like Tangled or Frozen. But in general, computer animated films turned out to be widely popular. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Establish a recon post downstairs. Code red, repeat. We are at code red. Recon plan, Charlie. Execute. Move, 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 move. It's a... It's a big one. Walt Disney Pictures presents a totally new animated motion picture event. Star Command, come in. Do you read me? The story of two toys. Oh, there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? Oh, yeah. ah! Headed for a showdown. My name is Woody... This is my spot. Ah! I am Buzz Lightyear. I come in peace. You are a child's plaything. You are a sad, strange little man. And playing by their own rules. Draw. Ah! Me again. I don't like confrontations. Buzz, look an alien. Where? Ah! <laughs> You're mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> Impressive wingspan. Very good. <laughs> oh, what? What? He can't fly. Yes, I can. Can't. Can. Can't. 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 This holiday season, the adventure takes off when toys come to life. To infinity and beyond. Toy Story. Look out! <laughs> can. The first of many huge movies in the world of animation. Now it seems like every second movie is an amazing animated movie. Of course, that one being Toy Story, it uh, definitely changed the game, Reza. It, it certainly did, yes. Has the development of animation been quite different in different countries? Um, yes, uh, in my opinion, it, it is quite different. Um, uh, not only the technology, but also the implementation. Um, and of course, it, it's on um, private sectors and, you know, to kind of to be able to deliver um, the education necessary f to kind of to help the fans grow, basically, or to help the uh, potential students to grow. And basically that they, they would be the future animators. On ABC Local Radio, we are talking about animation and the development of it. But what I'd like to know is what your favourite animation is. So do let us know uh, what your favourite cartoon is. You can find us on Twitter at ABC Local or you can text 0467 922 or give us a call on 1300 800 222. Always love to hear from you. Um, and now, Reza, I mean, we've gone right back to the beginning and through the development of sure. animation. But what's happening right now in animation? Well, um, I'm, I'm looking throughout the years and I, I believe animation is going to be more than just a, a medium to entertain people. Y you look at um, big presentations and uh, interactivity is always part of the presentations. You don't, you no longer, you know, see um, fonts, boring, dry fonts on a piece of paper. It's all about interactivity and animation is inseparable part of every demonstration. But the the, the fact is, um, 
it's going to be more than just to entertain people in addition to supplying entertainments in theater and of course at television um animation has become a, an essential teaching aid as well you know in, in education and um not even in in education but um let's say in in hospitals that would be a good example you know waiting rooms in hospitals and uh, animation is used to demonstrate procedures to the to the patients and it's uh, it's moving forward on and on and um it wouldn't be too hard to imagine to see a combination of animations and science you know we watch movies like minority report and everything is combined and every single element is interactive um, of course, for, for us, that would be daydreaming, wishful thinking, but I strongly believe that we, we are going to witness that one day. And Reza, I know you're a senior lecturer um, at SAE in Sydney. What's happening with your students that you see coming through? Well, um, actually, uh, we had a group uh, t two years ago um, in 2013, uh, or 14, I should say, um, uh, the project was Tough Love, uh, and the tagline was almost 30 and still a mess. <laughs> it cracks me <laughs> up every time I talk about it. Uh, but um, it was a, a brainchild of um, a, 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 my former student, Brad Dewins, who teamed up with his um, uh, fellow classmates, uh, Sophia, Brett, and Kylie, back in 2013 to, to create this. But uh, it was a comedy series, and um, I... Um, I know that small town animation has just raised six thousand uh, dollars through Kickstarter to put the finishing touches on the pilot. Uh, so hopefully that can be pitched to Australian networks, platforms, and and providers. But uh, stories like this uh, is just it make my day. To be honest with you, absolutely. So, yeah. Let's yeah. take a listen to uh, just a little bit of that. What about a boyfriend? Is there a special man in your life? No, Mindy. No man. No kids, no manicured lawns with a white picket fence. Just cats. They can smell desperation. Pretty okay with being single, thanks. But last night you said you were miserable. Oh, that's so sad. I'm not sad. Yes, I'm single and I don't have kids. Yes, I'm almost 30 and completely broke. And yes, I may be living with self-destructive alcoholics. Woo! <laughs> but that doesn't mean I'm sad. It just means you look sad. I think we pushed a button. Well, it was nice to see you, Trace. Come on, Steve. She's still crazy. I excuse me? Uh oh. Uh -oh. You said crazy? I I'm crazy, am I? Is that right? Oh, there are way too many witnesses here. Protect the booze! That is a little scene from Tough Love, and I can't wait to uh, see what the rest of it looks like as well, Reza. Very exciting stuff happening in the world of animation. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Reza, thank you so much for uh, coming in for a chat tonight and filling us in on some of the, uh, the animation and what's been happening over the years. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. 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 Thank you for having me.